<clears throat> okay, welcome back. Any questions? Anything you'd like to share? I have a question. Um, you were talking before about how ingrained some of our delusions are. And um, you were talking about sorry. Um so you were talking a about how ingrained our delusions are. And um I've experienced this, I feel I still do myself. So uh, my question is, I suppose, the best way to approach this, um, like finding out from the point of view um, what the difficulty is and then working with that or any suggestions would be mm. helpful, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, I think mainly um, analyzing the impact of uh, uh, the consequences or the impact that comes its own way. If it is harmful, uh, whether to do with uh, yourself or any others, then that to be... Uh, hmm. Yeah, so that to be <clears throat> uh, give up or how to say overcome, and if if there is um, uh, after weighing, if there's a greater benefit than the harm uh, in it, in our ordinary life, uh, many situations, including of certain you know, aspect of uh, actions that we engage, uh, actions that we express through our body, speech, and mind, uh, the benefit is greater than, even though there are certain limitations there, then you should choose the uh, the side of which which, which carry the more, more benefit. Uh, such an example, uh, the out of compassion, and you you express uh, the verbal and the physical expressions of aversion or a bit of uh, uh, sternness, lawfulness. Uh, if 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 that is uh, necessary, like such as in the situations of. Um, dealing with maybe children or partner or whatever, then uh, in, a, in, in certain kind of situation, then you need to weigh. Uh, because motivation-wise, is it is compassion. But then the outer expression is actually not peaceful. It's a wrathful. But the uh, but the purpose that which bring impact from that is beneficial. So, so, uh, yeah. But any any action by nature, whether to do with the, you know mind, such as like delusion, uh, any actions that which is intendedly you know causing harm through uh, speech and uh, physical action then to be avoided even how how minor it may be how how great uh, otherwise uh, uh, by nature 
it may not be negative, like the, uh, the example that I give, because of the motivation, uh, it influenced the action as a, not a negative. It appeared as a negative. Uh, like similar, like this rawful deities with, you know, very fear, fearful uh, um, staffs, implements that they carry, you know, blood drinking, uh, etc., like that. But all these are uh, for the purpose of subduing uh, very stubborn, very intense negativities. But these actions are elucidated by compassion. So that's why the rawfulness, uh, you know, is not a negative. So I don't know whether I, I understood your question and It's more I notice within my own mind mm -hmm. its tendency to go to the sort of cup in broken pieces that you were talking okay. about. Okay. So uh, I see. To get out of that. Right. So right. obviously I'm I mean, I am working on my perceptions about this, but it feels pretty slow. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. What do you think the life expectancy is? <laughs> so you have to, you know, you have to forgive. Uh, if is if if such uh, broken cup is in relation to someone else's action, you forgive them. If the action is caused by your own, your own misunderstandings, your own actions, then you should forgive yourself. Even if the actions, even that cup is broken by others, for your own benefit sake, you have to forgive. Uh, forgiving is not acknowledging, you know, or accepting others wrong as right. But forgiving is actually liberating yourself from the bondage of suffering that attached to you know that uh, that situation or you know that, that action. So, um, long time ago, uh, I visited uh, Israel, and they organized me to go to. Uh, I think I don't know. Uh, there's somewhere as a border. I think has to cross uh, the border. And they say is that that's the the most intense place. Any time, rocket bomb will drop. So, and and there's a group of uh, uh, ex uh, militaries ex. Uh, um, yeah, the ex uh, war uh, war fighters uh, from both sides, uh, Palestinian side and Israel side. You know they form a organization called the Combatant of Peace. So, so, so. Yeah, so they encourage, you know, they, they wanted to have some kind of like a moral support from Tibetan community. And happy to be there, I was invited and I was so happy and accepted the invitation. It was very intense, even just to reach to that particular uh, meeting place. It was um, a line of securities and just Maybe about five minutes before the the, the the one of the road that I supposed to reach was the car was bombed. J just about five minutes, uh, we our car could be the one, and uh, I think two two young uh, officers I think uh, also died. 
um, so very, very intense anyway. Uh, so then just, you know, um, uh, you can say. So the amazing thing is that there, there are many uh, unbelievable, you know, real stories, but there one story that stuck into my mind, uh, one of Palestinian uh, ex-army, ex, yeah, ex-army, his daughter was killed in front of his eye by the, uh, the opponent who was also right now renounced from the army, joined the combat and peace, and two of them become a so close friend. Uh, and they are fighting for the peace. And this guy, he, he give a speech and he says that, uh, he, he shared the story and say, I forgive, you know, uh, he who killed my daughter in front of my eyes and I forgive because I want to uh, free myself from the suffering that I attach to that, that event. And, and that is his contribution to, to really establish the peace in, in real time and in, in reality. In real, you know, it's not just a story. Someone, someone you know, in the fiction book and both persons are there, and they are so loving to each other. So, so it was so helpful, and this is what, you know, like what we learn from the adverses of the transformation, in in uh, in the Mayan teaching, and this is you know Bodhisattva's way of attitude. Uh, and when it comes to, so that's why. Uh, one of the, you know, the reason that, you, you know, one must agree and accept and apply that reason and bring into action of releasing oneself from the suffering is, 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 is the act of forgiving, you know, uh, with, with that reason so that you, you don't have to continue to suffer. Uh, and that is also if it's the action is of others, uh, if we don't purify that action, uh, that action will strengthen by the time. Because any karma, negative or positive, without even having motivation, it just by by natural process it increases it is strength. So it, it is something to do with negative relation to someone. If we don't purify as soon as possible, that negative negative relationship will strengthen every single moment, and we need to repeat the consequences. Maybe later part of life, or future lifetimes, or many many future lifetimes, uh, in relation to this particular person, like keep coming back to break your mark. And and the mark will be more and more valuable mark, because the karma accumulation is getting stronger and stronger. So as a, someone as who met the Buddha Dharma, who met the, especially, you know, this uh, altruistic Dharma, uh, compassion, uh, Buddhicitta, then we have to uh, initiate to end to that negative relationship so that uh, uh, so that in future time that you know uh, you can you can uh, not only serve the basis to to cultivate uh, uh, great compassion and altruism to all sentient beings, uh, but then you will have a very positive relationship with this particular person in future times, very beneficial relationship, you know so, so thinking about that, also it is it is most beneficial to right now uh, forgive, uh, and and also understanding the fact that the more you uh, recall the the negative incident, uh, it it accumulates new karma uh, created by our thoughts, new karma. 
So it's like keep adding up uh, more negative karma and karma always have consequences. Mm -hmm. And the only uh, beneficial way is again to purify the karma. And the way to purify, the first move is by forgetting it, forgetting about, letting go, not forgetting, but letting go of that, that imprint. You know, at least start with our thought, remembering it and gradually applying antidote to, to get rid of from the root, uh, from, uh, from our heart, even the imprint, you know, through certain aspect of purification, like Vajrasattva practice, you know, and practice of four opinion power, uh, even just by, uh, you know, reciting 21 times of Vajrasattva mantra, 100 syllable Vajrasattva mantra, those uh, unidentified, un uh, limitless karmic uh, potentials uh, in our continuum help to purify them from the root, you know? So, uh, yeah, so for, for forgiving is the best move. Thank you. I said on online question. Sure, please. Nashle Gishla. It's delay. Um, yeah, uh, Gishla, uh, you talked about uh, relating to the path and relating to the guru with detachment. Um, could you describe what this would look like? Because our habitual pattern of relating to anyone tends to be with attachment. So what would relating to the guru or the path with detachment look like? Mm. Uh, <laughs> so it looks like uh, as long as your motivation or your awareness, any action you relate to your guru is not influenced by worldly concern, then, then uh, whatever way you relate to your guru is spiritual, inspirational kind of relationship. Uh, it's, kind of, it's, it's like devotion, real devotion, beneficial devotion. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so should be free from the Edwardly concern. So you will know, you know, it's, it's, you're relating everything to do with uh, enlightenment, anything to do with actualizations of the path and grounds. Uh, then uh, those are inspirational uh, devotion. Uh, if it's to do with the samsaric benefit, then it is attachment. You know, just 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 to uh, relating to the guru, just to just just to feel good day. Very much could be attachment. Uh, you want Guru to um, be at the present of your coffee time. Uh, danger could be attachment. Uh, your Guru is like a boyfriend. You know, when you give call, then pick up, very happy. Uh, send message, you know, uh, you get very happy. Otherwise, you get upset. It's attachment. It's, it's, it's a worldly concern. It's nothing to do with the spiritual, you know. When it comes to a guru, even you ask Dharma teaching from guru, guru reject you, you still, you know, you still see that rejection as a teaching to really to purify your ego. Ah, that's real inspiration. Like Milarepa to Marpa. And how Milarepa relate to Marpa? Marpa initially you know, so much uh, rejection. Uh, Milarepa went through a hell <laughs> uh, from, the, from the actions of his guru, you know. Uh, but he saw all of this as a, as a purification. And then finally, when, when he really receiving teaching, it's just not many days, not many words. You know, he, he, he got the transmission of entire Dharma. Then when he went into uh, practice, 
he, he gained realization. You know, he achieved enlightenment within one very lifetime. That's devotion. That's guru devotion. We need that kind of devotion, you know. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, when guru insult you, you know, you 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 feel blissed. That that insultment is like a powerful uh, mantra spell on you to uh, to dispel, you know, uh, secret hindrances, heavy hindrances. Ah, ah, then you still admire the guru. You like the guru. That's inspiration. That's devotion. Uh, that's a path. It's not attachment. You know, if guru give you a good slap, uh, you know, that, that instead of feel offended, uh, you feel you receive a very profound initiation uh, and and really purify, dispel heavy karma. That's devotion. But then if Guru, you know, give you a nice touch, you feel so blessed, so wonderful. When the Guru slap you, you feel, oh, the Guru is so nasty. Yeah. You know, I don't like it. Uh, that shows that liking is actually attachment, not a devotion. You know, when guru kind of like neglect you, instead of seeing the voidness of inherent existence of the guru, you, you feel missing. You feel uh, guru abandoned me, guru kind of like, like ignore me. It shows it is attachment. You know, uh, your purpose is so limited just to give you a nice touch, you know, and you feel good. You know, that's that's not your purpose. Your spiritual purpose, your guru-disciple relationship purpose is, is, is enlightenment. And the teaching may come in a many different form. And many teachings can be so harsh because of the harshness, because of the stubbornness of our own limitation. Karma, like what Miladipa went through. Most of the Gautama Geshe's went through. Not easy life of disciples, how they go through the spiritual journey, you know. Uh, uh, so then when the guru give teaching, very, very tough one, give a tough homework, then you feel, uh, you know, guru start to teach more profound, it's so boring teaching. You know, it's like, it's like nothing to feel nice, to, to just to hear, you know. Uh, uh, there, there are uh, occasions that when the guru really uh, you know uh, task me to, you know uh, certain like profound blessing of the uh, teaching uh, it, it can go beyond uh, the words beyond you know our ordinary mind's understanding, mm. and 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 both some individual you know they lose interest, and it's just 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 wanting some nice talks, nice chat, you see. So, uh, so so in short. Uh, any action guru does see as an antidote to your your ego uh your you know then uh, all the manifestations of your ego you know aversion attachment jealousy etc and any action guru does is inspiration to renounce samsara renounce karma renounce delusion uh, renounce ordinariness and aspire enlightenment, liberation, you know, wisdom and the path, then uh, the latter is devotion, the earlier is attachment. I, I would I would understand something like that. Thanks, Kishla. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, hello, Gesha. Hello. Um, my question is, is um, attachment to liberation and enlightenment um, and wanting peace of mind, are they just two different ways of saying the same thing? Mm, uh, uh, different, I think. Wanting peace of mind is uh, very much, uh, very much, I think, focus on the, the present time you know, uh, our, our mind, our mental state. And one thing, liberation and enlightenment is beyond present time's mind. So it's, uh, I think, two different things. And uh, aspiring the peace of mind is wonderful. We should aspire for that. Uh, but not just aspiring peace of mind for the present time. So that, that alone is limited. Uh, we aspire peace of present time, peace of this life, peace of the present mind, uh, in order to accumulate the right cause for the ultimate peace of our continuum, which is liberation enlightenment. So when we talk about the cause and effect, in order to deliver complete result, you need complete cause and right cause, you see. So for enlightenment, enlightenment nature is being perfected peace. You need the similar cause that we need to accumulate now, which is peaceful, peaceful state of wisdom and peaceful state of attitude. And the main thing is peaceful state of wisdom and peaceful state of attitude. So peaceful state of attitude very much, you know, comes from uh, all pervasive love, compa great, you know, compassion, uh, altruism, and that serve uh, direct and complete cause to actualize Buddha's form body. Uh, the present times, uh, the peaceful state of our mind through the wisdom a wisdom of selfless, you know, wisdom of uh, letting go of grasping, wisdom of emptiness, you know, meditating on it, uh, the wisdom of in, in, uh, in, impermanent, etc. That will serve direct cause to deliver uh, the perfected uh, peace of enlightenment as a wisdom body of the Buddha. So. <clears throat> Uh, so if we if we if we acquire uh, a peaceful life, peaceful this life, peaceful this very moment, peaceful this very moment of our mind, uh, for that ultimate purpose, it becomes an altruistic practice. But if it's just for 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 this present time only, then it becomes very limited. It is it is not a it is not a non-virtue. Uh, it is a virtue, but it's a limited virtue. So I would say like that. Intention will, yeah, right. In, intention will uh, will define. Mm. Even even when we talk about whether whether our actions of body, speech, and mind are dharma or non-dharma, just ordinary virtue or spiritual virtue, uh, very much defined by motivation, you know, like that. Thank you. Uh, my question relates to everyday life, like all of us, we struggle through life, but many of us try and do virtuous things. But when somebody prays us, we get very happy, even though our intention is to do Dharma. But somehow, when somebody says, oh, you're doing a great job, somehow the ego comes up and says, I like that. So how do I know after that, mm. that I'm doing something that I've done before, 
before somebody came and said I did a good job. How do I mm. know that my intention is still Dharma? Yeah. <clears throat> so when you did good thing and someone praised you, feel happy is virtue. Feel happy is good, nothing wrong. But uh, that uh, assists to boost self cherishing attitude, uh, in particularly self centered ego, uh, and clouding to uh, to the to the altruistic mind, uh, you know, meaning clouding to altruistic mind, meaning now you start to focus more on yourself, you start to stay less focused on others. You know, th that's what I meant. Uh, and uh, uh, and if you start to uh, uh, attach to it, uh, uh, very much uh, longing, you know, the praise again, uh, uh, just because of you, you, you very much because of appreciate the the, the liking, the, the joy that you experience. Then that that may you know, uh, uh, yeah, that may put the experience into a maybe very much like non-virtue. But otherwise, uh, when you did good and when people are praising you, and you should feel happy, and and that happiness, in fact, should become a force of your greater inspiration to do more more such good thing. You know, if, if you done well doing some charity and someone praise you, then the praise should become a condition for you to do even more charity. Uh, if you have done retreat, someone praise you, you should feel you should feel happy. Uh, you should acknowledge that you did good. And then take that as a uh, inspirational force for you to conduct even more better retreat, more retreats, you know, so that will fall into a, a practice of rejoice, which is which is one of the the best virtue, the easiest virtue that you can accumulate, like what Shanti Deva said in Buddhist Avacharya, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, when others are praising you, means others are happy of your good doing, which is so wonderful. They are rejoicing towards your virtue. Okay? And you have to rejoice to that, which is you yourself can rejoice in your virtue. And in fact, in the, the in the sutra, the benefit of rejoicing to your own virtue, your own good deeds, multiplied, double, without even performing the action. The initial goodness, you need to perform the action. Quite hard work, isn't it? Second time onward, you just you just recall it, feel happy about it. You get the merit double up. You see, then uh, even to the Buddhas, you know, there's a practice to rejoice uh, to the Buddhas. When you rejoice the merit of Buddha, you receive one person of ten, ten out of one percent of the Buddha's merit. Can you imagine? And if you ask Buddha, are you happy when I praise you? He said, Buddha would say, I'm very happy you praised me. I did great, great works and you, you acknowledge me and I'm so happy, you know. And similar, uh, you, you can be in the same position that when you did good, you should feel happy. And that happiness actually falls into a, a practice of rejoice. Thank you. Because I usually tell them, no, it's not. No, no, no. no. It's Don't nothing. be modest. It's it, it's nothing. Don't be too modest. <laughs> I say, oh, thank you, thank you, yes, thank you, thank you very much, and uh, thank you. <laughs> I say, oh, okay, yes, 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 yeah. Nobody does that, you know. Only I do this. Uh, then no good. <laughs> I say, thank you very much. Appreciate, and you you encourage me, and I will. I hope that I can do more. Thank you very much. It's so wonderful. Yeah, that will not have ego in it. Yeah, no, no that. ego. And and you will know, you know, when you did good thing and someone praised you, if you are genuinely 
practicing according with the Dharma. That will make you so humble. That really kind of like, uh, like, like bring you to the, you know, the, the ground. You know, you, you feel so humble. You know, you know, there's like a numberless mountain-like knowledge you need to accumulate. You know, eons of merit need to accumulate. But even I just do one tiny and people are so happy about it and praising me, you, you naturally feel so humble, isn't it? So, so we, we, we can have that kind of perception. Yes. Thank you. We should praise more, by the way. We should praise more. We should spot qualities of each other's more. We should acknowledge. You know, otherwise, like everything is something is limitation. You know, this also not enough, that also not good enough. You know, I mean, if you if you if you see from the 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 good side, you know, right perspective, there's so many great things. It's so helpful to the society, so helpful to your mind, so helpful to others' mind, because everything starts from, uh, you know, of course, first is perception, then that perception deliver the action by the word, and can be so powerful. You know, I think in our world the good things are uh, less acknowledge, less praise, less emphasize. Negative thing, false, is over-highlighted, over-expressed, you know. So, so until, it, it, until, you know, create a kind of, uh, you know, like very negative perception about, about, whole world, you know, uh, everybody, you see. So praise, that's why we do pujas. We do prayers. Most of the content of the prayers and pujas are praises. Uh, uh, mentioning, describing the qualities of the Buddha. Uh, you know, and like 21 Tara praises. It's, you know, describing all the good things. You know, there's not even, not even one thing, say bad things. And and but but that is not, is very much like more into text. We have to do that among human beings. You know, isn't it? Uh, I mean, we have everybody has even the worst person has the, the the the. You know the huge qualities like Buddha nature. Buddha nature. Even while we are meditating, we don't acknowledge the Buddha nature with which pre-existing within us. And no question about you know able to acknowledge others' Buddha nature, isn't it? You know, so yes. Okay. So um, you mentioned um, in Nirvana, there's no opportunity to practice, uh, but in samsara there is. Oh yes. <laughs> so my question is uh, the difference between a solitary life, which is more disposed to peace and practice versus being fully in the world where there is a more chance for service or bodhicitta. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe what you could see the merits in both? Because I've been in one, the solitary life for a while, and I felt I wanted to go back out into the world and make more of a difference, but there's much more distraction and less peace there, but there's more service opportunity. Yep. Could you describe the benefits in each path? Okay. Uh, we need to balance, balance. Um, until we become, until we achieve, I think minimum, uh, the Bodhisattva on the second uh, level of the path from the five path, the path of preparation, first the path of accumulation, then the path of preparation, part of seeing, part of meditation, part of no more learning. So the ordinary Bodhisattva's part, they are true. So part of preparation on the, on the there are four stages. Uh, so until you achieve the, the, the fourth level, the Supreme Dharma, uh, 
you can lose bodhicitta. You can get discouraged. And discourage is fine, but you may completely give up bodhicitta. Uh, you see, so now, uh, so until until you surpass uh, or very much uh, until you become Arya Bodhisattva, then uh, self grooming, you know, self nurturing, like through dedicated solitude retreats, uh, taking taking whatever time that emotionally, physically, environmentally to 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 uh, you know. Uh, make yourself strong enough. Then, the the goal of doing that is ultimately is come into the being. Uh, in our in our case, come into the society, uh, to be in the service. Uh, so both both equally necessary. All those solitary retreaters, their ultimate goal is to come into the being. Uh, some solitary retreaters, they retreat whole this life but preparing for their future life to be completely into the society. Uh, some certain three years, five, six, seven years, you know, they dedicate in retreat. Once they are confident about the strength, the immune system of their, their altruism, then they come out into the society. And many, in fact, they, they choose to go to a very difficult places, especially for Bodhisattva practitioners, uh, they they would choose to the the most difficult places to be in the service, and and even that also, uh, uh, they take continue to take as a training for themselves, and time to time they may feel low, they may feel discouraged, they may feel offended, uh, and they try to bounce back, and if it's a bit too tired, go back into retreat, you know. So that has to be. Uh, well balanced by yourself. Both is important. Yeah. And rejoice that you did that. You say you went into some solitude practice and you are, you know, getting into a service like that. Uh, but even for us, you know, like, uh, like for personally for myself, when I'm in tour, uh, always with people, you know, and always reading Dharma texts, try to cultivate, you know, Dharma teaching, and what, what I try to share is the Dharma, and people who come and listen is all are Dharma practitioners. It's very favorable uh, kind of environment, but still, but still I need, you know, at least once a year, at least, you know, maybe a, even a week, I need a different environment for me to kind of uh, regain certain inner strength. Like, uh, so for me, like I, I will go to uh, receive teaching from my teachers, like, like his oneness teaching events, even just one, two day is like so helpful, like give you the strength uh, to, to keep you going for the rest of the years. It doesn't matter who you meet, where you are, what you do, but it's like, it really gives the strength. Or if, if no such opportunity, we go into retreat. It's so helpful. Even just a week solitude retreat, uh, just completely like kind of like, uh, you know, focus in, inward. Uh, not even not even kind of like thinking about, you know, how should I do this to this, you know, to, to them, rather completely working, working on or, or just uh, glancing through, you know, entire state of my my mind, uh, it is so helpful. It's necessary, which I I feel personally for myself, like that. Yeah. So I think what yeah whatever we do, I think we cannot do until burn out. Uh, even you do. Great thing, great service to society, but shouldn't you know like honor you until you're burnout. If you are already Aya Bodhisattva, go for it. 
you will never discourage, you will never give up, you will never kind of uh, see limitations on anybody or even how difficult the task is, how difficult that you are put into, you know. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we have to timely know how to uh, take a step back. Necessary. But we do that for the benefit of longer period benefit, you know, more greater benefits, you know, uh, so so like that. Yeah. So oh, then maybe I want to add one more, sorry. So you see, discouragement, uh, uh, especially when we take care of human being, uh, you know, the, this, the heart of dis, uh, discourage uh, it so easily can occur. And it's okay. You feel sometimes discouraged, it's okay. And you have to say, okay. You, you, you have to feel offended, okay. Uh, but you don't give up. You don't slip away your, your, your focus uh, to the journey in, in being in the service, you see. So sometimes when we think about, uh, you know, like Cherezik, it's compassionate, compassionate Arya Bodhisattva then. Uh, by, by nature of Arya Bodhisattva, there's, there's no room to discourage being in the service of sentient beings. But illustrated this teaching that when compassionate uh, Bodhisattva was liberating, you know, so many beings uh, uh, out of samsara, and he thought that now samsara should be empty because I have liberated so many limitless beings. And when look back, you know, it's still like even one, one space is not empty. Like it's still the same like that. So feel, feel discouraged. Then the head crack into 11 pieces. Tear and say, I'm giving up. So then from the tear, you know, form a uh, lake. Then from there, Mother Tara was born. Then Mother Tara says, you know, no, you, you shouldn't. You know, I, I will, I will, uh, I will um, uh, be, the, be the source of activity, like, like kind of support. Uh, then not to give up. You know, it happened like that. So uh, when, when you're in the service of living being, so it's, you also need a good community. Good, good environment where, uh, where they you know always encourage you. You know, um, so otherwise they say, "Oh, I feel offended." I, then people some, sometimes totally give up. Even in the in a dharma environment, you know, some individuals serve for 20, 30 years. They say the ones they burn out, you know, they never they never see even their sight in the temples, or, or you know, they they completely. Uh, way out like that, you know. So, so that's why like this kind of society is so so beneficial. And as I said before, uh, not just getting together, but need to encourage each other. Uh, need to need to encourage, you know. Need to feel so happy to see you here, you know, and so happy you repeatedly seeing you here like that, you know. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Geshe-la. Uh, there's an online question I'd like me to read out. Uh, geshe -la, what is imprint made out of? Is it only through purification that it disappears? How do you know when it's 100% gone? And finally, is it possible that you purify the, the virtuous one as well? Mm -hmm. So imprints are based on Buddhist understanding. It's uh, made out of the action, the activity that you engage, you know, through your body, speech, and mind. Uh, so that uh, uh, that accumulate uh, potential in our conscious, you know, uh, conscious level potential, and that potential is called imprint. And as for the uh, the sign of purification, or complete clearing of the imprint. 
uh, one of the way is by re, re, you know occupying entire our consciousness with virtues. You know our conscious, our mind, our mind, mental continuum, mental awareness is completely replaced or completely occupied, completely filled with sustainable virtues, uh, like such as mindfulness of uh, any form of virtue. Uh, uh, then uh, filled with the wisdom, wisdom of uh, wisdom of uh, selflessness, etc. You see, so if the wisdom and the uh, the virtuous attitude uh, remaining in our system sustainably as well as stable and be, uh, stable plus uh, becoming natural naturally uh, alive of those virtue in our continuum uh, you know without needed uh, reasons to, you know, reasons to bring life of those virtues in our continuum, then we can understand that the negativities are completely eradicated because you have actualized the cessation in virtue. You know, this can be illustrated like when you when you go through the ten bumis. Uh, so in Tibetan they're called like. Uh, so during the meditative equipoise, the, the, there are two major stages. The first stage is parchemalam. If uh, the first stage of meditative equipoise, uh, where where the antidote antidote take it is base in 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 our continuum. In, in that meditative state of the mind. Uh, that time, the negation or the negativities dispelled, but not completely dispelled. In our, in, our, in our mental system, that particular negation or negativities is not there. Uh, not there, but can you claim it? If have you completely purified? No, not 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 yet. Uh, for example, is uh, uh, in the in the middle of the night at the dark period, you own the light. That's very much like the stage of parche melam. You know, you own the light. The darkness disappear from the room, isn't it? But have you completely purified the darkness at that night? No, because if you off the light, darkness will come back. So, so now, in order to completely negate, completely from your system, is when you achieve the namdolam, which is the cessation uh, through the effort of the meditative ego poise, especially uh, accomplishing the second stage of the meditative equipoise uh, by the result of by the result of stay in a meditative equipoise until uh, uh, until the wisdom by nature not by creation not by force but by nature lively become part of their part of the the, the mind state Oh, and a part of your mental mental quality, uh, and uh, the 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 entire that mental space is completely uh, an example. If anger is occupying that whatever space of the mental mental space that earlier anger occupied is completely filled with the wisdom, wisdom of the antidote. Uh, uh, and that label is complete, then uh, you achieve the cessation. Then the negativities will, will never return back. It's very much like you're able to stay on the switch of the light until the next morning. So then after the, the daylight comes, even you on or off doesn't matter. You know, the darkness of that night will not come back, isn't it? 
so so it's so so very much uh, uh, like that so that's that's why any purification you do uh you do with the antidote so the antidote is very much very much similar whether you do through meditative you know those who are on the path you know they do through meditative eco points but we don't have that capability now but we can at least uh adopt the antidote as a part in our system and repeatedly uh, have, bring habitual training to our mind on that on that uh, antidote you know by by remembering it again and again uh, uh, in, you know uh, going through you know different stages of meditation like uh, analytical meditation or observation meditation, but simply try to occupy it. Again, an example like anger, you want to dispel the anger, then the antidote is uh, patient or, or, or antidote is uh, the wisdom of uh, emptiness, you see. So uh, for, length, for length of time, you occupy your system repeatedly, you know, cultivating the antidote until the antidote is lively there without even by creation of a force. Uh, and that's very much like you achieve the nabdulam, the cessation, and no more return of that particular negated negativities, you know, comes in your way. So, so, uh, uh, so such as uh, even like opening power, you know, like for opening power is antidote for any negativities, isn't it? And if your heart is filled with this four open and power and repeatedly bring happy to your heart, the, the entire your mental system will be occupied with that. And, and that you can claim that whatever negativities that you wanted to purify, whether known one or, or unaware, the exact what negative, negative, negativity is, uh, as long as you're confident uh, in your practice, uh, the the quality and the amount of time, then you can claim that is that is purified by by reality. There's no inherent negativities is out there, isn't it? It's very much our confusion. There's no inherent ignorance out there. There's no bad karma inherently exists out there, isn't it? Is it, it is very much uh, build up. Uh, uh, the empire of negative emotion, like ignorant. And that grasping is the one that make it so negative. Uh, and, 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 and conventionally we experience, we, we feel the impact of their negativities, mentally, physically, environmentally, isn't it? Uh, you know, so, so therefore, th through uh, valid, antidote uh, application, then at the end you have a steady conviction, there you can say, I have purified. It's very much of, of whether you've, you know, like you're completely following the wisdom or still continue to doubt, you know, uh, whether the wisdom really work or not, you know, you see. Uh, so so that's, that's one of the way. Another way of understanding is that Uh, you will know yourself, you know, the, the, um, the every moment of, of your mental, mental attitude. If your heart, every single moment, whenever there's awareness, is awareness of love, compassion, bodhicitta, wisdom, inspirations, you know, your heart is like completely free from all the negative emotions. Even you are in a negative environment, but then your heart is not responding to the negativities. You completely, uh, you know, uh, control the system with your positivities according with the wisdom. And, and the and the virtuous attitude, and there you can you can tell yourself, oh, I reach up to a quite level of purification. 
you know. So 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 you can determine looking into your your moment to moment state of your mind, isn't it? Something something like that. And there are certain um, you see that when we talk about limitations, negativities, there are many kinds. Uh, let's say certain negativities. Uh, mm, you know, the opposite of, you know, the opposite of all the individual liberation precepts, opposite of all the Bodhisattva precepts, opposite of all the tantric precepts, has a, has a limitation of negativities. And when you restore, let's say, if the limitation or the negativity in relation to individual liberation precept, when you restore the individual liberation, there you can claim you have purified any limitation related to the individual liberation, like such as an example in relation to refuge. Uh, or, or, yeah, uh, like causing harm to one, in, one single sentient being can be causing harm to N. After you take refuge in Buddha Dharma Sangha, if you cannot save the life of N, you at least don't cost the life of N, isn't it? But here now you, 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 you cost the life of N, maybe intentionally, maybe, let's say. And now you restore the precept to the refuge, you can claim now that that particular negative karma is purified. And similarly, uh, like lay vow, like no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no intoxication. You see, intoxication is negative, isn't it? Uh, sexual misconduct is negative, isn't it? Lying is negative, isn't it? Killing is negative, isn't it? Now, that negative karma, how to purify? By restoring the five precepts, or, or each of the precepts, whatever, whatever, is, whatever is committed. There you can claim, okay, now my karma, karma of killing is purified by the applications of antidote uh, of, of, the, of the precept. So when you restore the precept uh, in relation to the broken precept, four opponent powers are naturally integrated. Then similar goes to the bodhisattva. Bodhisattva, uh, you know, like such as criticizing Vajra brother sisters. Uh, and that's a very special negative karma. <laughs> you know, and we, we, we may do many, many, many form of purification practice, but to gain a confidence yourself that I did purify, I did broke that uh, uh, precept, now I did purify it, is when you restore the Bodhisattva precept. You know, then similar goes to like Tantra uh, Guru, there are Samayas, you know, you retake the Samaya, like, uh, uh, so, 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 so there are many ways to, to, to understand this. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So if no question, then any question? Any more question? No? Okay. Mm. So in relation to the subject, I think I still have some more to say about the pre of perception. <laughs> so if I relate, uh, this subject in relation to uh, very straightforward in relation to uh, you know the Buddha's teaching mm. uh, 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 especially you know like a lambrim the stages of the path to enlightenment the complete aspect of the path uh, uh, then the the, the struct, uh, we'll say constructing the correct perception is is uh, is a primary 
is the main thing. It's all about constructing uh, perception according with the, with the with the teaching, and that's the way that you uh, you know you cultivate the, the the teaching. You cultivate the path, and eventually, through that, you will realize the wisdom. Uh, you know, so uh, if 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 I relate to Lamrin, like such as the you know they start with the guru devotion practice. You know. <clears throat> You see, the 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 ultimate goal of the practice of guru devotion is to able to realize uh, wisdom of seeing guru in Buddha, seeing guru as a Buddha, sameness with the Buddha, you know, according with the Mayanic Mayanic teaching, according with the Lamrim teaching. You see, so that is the ultimate goal. You see, so now. At this very ordinary stage, beginning beginner level, and myself, when I relate to when I when I view guru, I view guru as a ordinary human being. Hmm? Even if I need to view the guru as a Buddha, I need to, you know, I need to use a lot of reasoning, uh, you know, and not yet genuinely, you know. Um, arriving from the depth of my heart, naturally seeing Guru as a Buddha. I don't have that. So, but I need to create that perception. I need to create a perception of seeing Guru as a Buddha. Mm, seeing Guru as a Buddha. Mm. So for that, then we relate to the teaching, you know, from 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 the from Buddha by Buddha himself, what he, what he said in the sutra and the tantra, you know, uh, like such as in the in the tantric teaching, um, uh, the bestowing the initiation of the Vajrapani, you know, how should you view your 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 human guru? You view the human guru uh, as a Buddha, as a Vajradhara. Uh, you see, uh, then. You relate to the teaching. There are so many um, uh, um, you know, uh, propositions, like Buddha, Buddha Vajradhara himself uh, prophesies. Uh, in future time, you know, I will manifest into an ordinary human form as a guru. So there are many, many quotations, many a claim by Buddha Vajradhara himself. You know, I'm just giving an example. So if you look into the Lamrim, you will see all of them. You see? So, uh, uh, by trusting, you know, since we are, we are, we are training our, training our perception from ordinary to, uh, to have a spiritual perception, Dharma way of perception, you know, beneficial perception in relation to the guru devotion practice. And we need to use those teachings as well as uh, reasoning. You see, what is the purpose of Buddha uh, coming into our life? You know, what is the purpose of Buddha descending into this southern world? You know, is, is, to, is to teach, isn't it? To reveal the wisdom of the Dharma, to inspire us, you know, uh, uh, towards liberation, make us see the limitations of samsara, the karma and delusion, and remain as an inspiration uh, of, of someone, you know, someone uh, carry the qualities of the Buddha, uh, full of compassion, like His Holiness the Dalai Lama, you know, like heart completely filled with altruism, filled with the wisdom, you know, and that's the exact quality that Buddha has, you know. So he manifesting into an ordinary human form. The reason to to see him as a Buddha logically is everything is there. His his his, his your guru does like like His Holiness does the, all the activities of the Buddha would do. If you happen to see Buddha Vajradhara directly, 
as a, as a, as as a, as a form of guru, he would behave exactly the same way what he saw Dalai Lama is doing. You know, and what your guru is doing. You know, besides revealing Dharma, there's no other job for the guru. Besides being an inspiration to your to your to your spiritual path, there's no other meaning for the guru to exist in your life. There's no 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 meaning at all. You see, and all those meanings are delivering, delivering by the, the human guru uh, for the ordinary perception, for the ordinary mind, you see similar ordinary like yourself. But the constructed, you know, well-managed uh, perception for you, able to see him as a Buddha or her as a Buddha. And so it's very much, you know, it's, it's depend on the perception, you see. And once uh, initially, you know, on the basis of uh, the propositions and the logic and the reasoning, and you start to, uh, you know, uh, reconstruct your, your perception to the pure a valid view. You know, seeing Guru as a Buddha is not an invalid perception. You know, when we talk about perception, there are uh, valid perception, uh, invalid perception, wrong perception, misperception, false perception, beneficial perception, harmful perception. There are many, many kind of perceptions out there. Very much, there are 51 mental factors, isn't it? All those are perception. False mind, uh, valid mind. You know, there's there's so many different different form of mind. So similarly, the, the is is about the perception. You see. So, <clears throat> and by cultivating this uh, design uh, perception accordingly with the instruction of the Dharma, eventually you will realize. Uh, the wisdom that which is also a perception, but which is valid, uh, which is in the form of wisdom, and uh, it become a path as a realization. It, it become a path. It become a, your own, uh, you know, natural state of mental factor. It become natural state of mental factor, and there you claim that now I have arrived. Uh, to the realization of guru devotion. And from that onward, you don't need logic, you don't need uh, reasoning. The moment you see, the moment you think of guru, you see Buddha. You see, you only see Buddha. And whatever actions of the guru, everything is actions of the Buddha. You see? And so powerful that until that, Buddha's uh, wisdom, the Dharmakaya, is all pervasive, it becomes the guru all pervasive to you. You become oneness with the guru and you actualize the inner guru. You see, you actualize the inner guru. You know, from that very moment onward, in that wisdom, you are inseparable from the guru. Since you're inseparable from the guru, now you have no worry about performing any mistakes. You gain the best protection. Because you are, you are oneness with the Guru, you speak, you should speak the way how Guru would speak. You behave the way how Guru would behave. You cultivate the heart the way how Guru would cultivate, isn't it? If you do like that, if you do like that as a Buddha, like how Buddha would behave, how Buddha would think, since Guru is Buddha, no room for us to commit any more negative karma. And if you're able to sustain that mindfulness and come to a point that you will be fully awakened. Maybe the awakening period is maybe one day left, another 30 years may left, maybe 90 years may left, depending on how quick you're going to die. <laughs> and how, how quick, how quick uh, your clear light, natural clear light will come in your way which is also a natural, you know, it's like provided to any being uh, who actually uh, come, who, who born as a, 
you know, who born on the basis of high aggregates, like we human being, you know, not all being has the experience of uh, clear light. You know, like those formless being have no, no, no chance. We human being, because we're having, in particularly the southern human being, that we call the ngaje come to then. You know, there are six elements that which, which make us so unique, so special, so favorable to actualize enlightenment quickest as possible. Uh, you know, the 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 opportunity for enlightenment is like naturally provided, not just the Buddha nature, but the clear light experience. You know, when we go through the dead process, the clear light experience is 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 in fact the natural experience of Dharmakaya, natural experience of wist, uh, wisdom of emptiness. So, throughout the life, if we if we have uh, uh, well familiarize uh, of the wisdom and the method that Dharma practices, in particularly like emptiness, then when the natural clear light occurs to us, you know, you don't ignore or you don't label, mislabel, you simply kind of label to the right experience uh, as a Dharmakaya. You know, the the uh, the experience of clear light is very much losing of entirety of uh, conceptual fabrications, losing of entire uh, uh, influence of the karma, the influence of the yeah influence of any uh, neg negative negative. Uh, uh, negative karmic influence. You know, the clear light state is free from negative karmic influence. And complete void and all pervasive is exactly like the Dharmakaya aspect. It's, it, Dharmakaya is nothing more than that, in fact. The only thing we, we are unable to actualize Buddhahood then is because of we are unable to sustain you know, that all pervasive wisdom or exalted wisdom, you know, we, we kind of return back to our, our ordinariness. That's why we are unable to experience, you know, sustainable dharmakaya, you see. So therefore, there's a term it used, mabutepa, you know, mother and son meeting. When the natural clear light experience, if you have a good training, a good habitual dharma practices throughout the life, then uh, the sun, which is well developed through training throughout the life, and you meet the mother that, that already pre existed out there, the, the natural clear light, you know. So, you see, so, uh, okay, now I'm distracted. Yes. So, all, all this again is very much of you know, uh, the training of your perception, right? It makes sense? Okay. Mm. So now then, after that, in the Lamrim, it comes about precious human rebirth. You see, again, it's, it's very much constructing, you know, our perception uh, about our life, you see. So there are two aspects. The latter part, after the topic of precious human rebirth, is about death and impermanent. You see all the limitations. But first, you see all the qualities like eight freedoms, ten endowments. For me, I would say just being born in the time of living compassionate Buddha in a human form, being as our guru, from whom we 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 freely able to enjoy the complete aspect of dharma initiations receiving vows commentaries transmissions what can be more freedom more favorable than favorable life than that isn't it we don't need to count about oh not born as hell not born as hungry gods okay that's the usual one but just think one one reason we our life uh, for me i would i would understand that our life is more fortunate than 
the time that during Shakyamuni Buddha's time. For me, it's yes, because I was I was not born there. <laughs> but but maybe better off, I'm born in the time where the compassionate Buddha uh, in the living guru form uh, live among us and transmitting the, the spiritual blessing of the complete Dharma. Unbelievable. What can be more favorable life than that? Isn't it? Unbelievable. If you just think like that, you just, you know, you, you, you just want to, <laughs> maybe too cold, but go to the beach, Perth beach, just sunbath, just with full of joy. You know, uh, you think about it, wow, you know, this really is, is to celebrate. If I don't celebrate now, with this life, when, when can I celebrate? It's, you know, you see? So, so we need to have that perception. We need to have a perception of the preciousness, you know, of our life. You know, and give all the reasons, you know, fit all these amazing favorable reasons to our mind, to our perception. And we, we have that very, you know, kind of well-designed perception about our life. And that is, I think, a very powerful source to, to bring inner peace right now, to, to bring heart filled with joy, you know, wow. You know, you don't listen like someone is just talking, you feel it. I feel it like, ooh. <laughs> this is like, it's like, ooh. <laughs> Uh, so the, I think bl blood circulations are also happening very well. You know, I can I can feel itchy on the head. It's so it's it's real. It's like that. You see, uh, then all the inconvenience, all the mistakes. You know, we we so called we have done or we are doing is so small, and the samsara is so small. You know, this samsara. Uh, this 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 health issue, this you know, someone's hurting you, someone this there's all this uh, it, it's like tiny dot, you know. Is I mean, don't even need to focus, nothing. You 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 have too much good thing to focus. Your perception is filled with this amazing, unbelievable, favorable, you know, uh, goodness that you have in your life, isn't it? Like that, you see. Ah, then, we say, then, now utilize, you know, this favorable rebirth, you see, to fulfill the ultimate goal for others, like goal of enlightenment. Uh, you see, you become like a relics, uh, even though physically you may not able to reach each and every living being, you know, be there and teach them, guide them into Dharma. Not possible, isn't it? But you become like a relics, like Guru Shajimuni Buddha's relics, like the Dharmakaya, all pervasive. They, they reach to every living being. You may say, then how, how come there are so many misbehaviors also? No. Even those misbehaviors, misbe misbehaviors are the result of their past, past action, the karma is experiencing, but they are still skillfully, one or another way, Buddha is still reaching out there. Because there is an end to a samsara, negativities to all living beings. Samsara, there's an there's a empty of some cell existing one day, you know, and that is, the, that is the reason of Buddha's blessings is all pervasive to all sentient beings, you see. So therefore, yourself, you know, if you, if yourself, you, 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 you cultivate the, the virtue and the practice, especially in altruism, then your merits are reached to the rest of the numberless sentient beings. Your merits will last until to the last living being that who will achieve enlightenment. You know, the power of the altruistic merit, you see, even though action may be just doing gardening, just be cooking for your family, just taking care of your children, you know, or just traveling or whatever you're doing, you know, whatever normal job you're doing, just with the intention, just with the motivation of Bodhicitta, 
entire your action, even the action by nature is not altruism, not altruistic, but it becomes the merit you accumulate, you accumulate altruistic merit. You see? So it's easy. So we need to have that, that mindset, uh, that perception about the power of our life, you know, the power, power out of this fortunate rebirth. You know, we, we, we can we can we need to have first things we need to have that perception. You see, and on, on that perception, we need to have a conviction in that, you see. You see, and the conviction, even in the Lambrim, it says the first conviction, uh, knowing the knowing the favorable and the freedom that we have, the first decision is I can practice the Dharma. I can benefit all sentient beings. I can be Buddha. I can be Buddha right now also. You see, that conviction. You know, in Lamrim, they use the language of three decisions. The first decision is, I can practice Dharma. You know, in the morning, I was talking about some may think that, oh, you know, maybe too late practicing Dharma, too late meeting Guru, or some may think I haven't even found my Guru. Some may think I haven't even taken refuge. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Wherever you are, is the right time, right position. It's the right position. And you can make it even greater purpose and meaning of your life wherever you are by adopting the, the heart of bodhicitta, you know, at least in the motivation. And that's, that's not difficult, isn't it? That's not difficult. The moment you wake up in the morning, you start with bodhicitta motivation, you know, you'll be like magic. You will, you will feel like, wow. You know, even before you come out from the bed, you, know, you already feel, wow. Oh, then after that, even you have you are having the awful breakfast, you will feel wow. <laughs> that's 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 wow, it's a blessing. You see? Then if raining, you feel wow. You know, you have a so positive perception, it's like, oh, so many natural habitats, you know, they need that, you know. You see? Oh, then no rain, sunny, oh wow, sun, you know, immediately think of the beach. Okay, you see, so so everything become, uh, you know, positive because your heart is open, wide, because of the altruism. You know, the bodhicitta has that power. Your heart naturally opens like that. So then, along the way, there's a trouble. The first thing in the morning, come out from your bed. There's a complaint from your kids or your partner, or whatever. It's okay. <laughs> you will say this is. Wow, you know, I'm in the position to, you know, they are my guru. You know, they are my guru. I've done my best, but they're still complaining. You know, they're really my most precious guru to, to really, for me to, you know, accomplish the practice of six parameta, like patient. Wow. You know, so you, you don't hear the complaint. You rather, you know, you feel so grateful of their complaint. And that itself, you know, your day will be wonderful, isn't it? I mean, most of the time, I mean, we cannot escape away from a lot of complaints in our life. But if you have altruism, best way to escape from all the complaints, you know, to, to not be affected, you see. So, uh, so then throughout the day, if you remember the bodhicitta, well done. If not, then at least the motivation already taken care. Then at the evening before go to bed, I mean, we don't have to go to bed like as if like you're scared of the nightmare, of the dream. You, you, you know, you, you know. I, I heard that some people have so much trauma going to bed. You know, they 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 just uh, they're scared to go to sleep because the moment they close their eye, they they're scared. They have all sort of illusions, all sort of whatever, whatever. You know, but then with the bodhicitta, oh, amazing. You see, I mean, you go to bed for the benefit of numberless sentient beings, enlightenment. Can you imagine? Next morning, in case you didn't wake up, well done. Yeah. <laughs> Without any doubt, you will be in the right place. But if in case, if in case you're still alive, the breakfast definitely going to be a good one. <laughs> uh, your day going to be much more better, uh, you see. So, 
so so like uh, like that you see then uh, you know in very best you know to be in the service as i mentioned before for buddhiji the practitioner uh, then you know because of that altruistic environment that you acknowledge now even the worst place you know you you see the meaning there you see you see like 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 the beautiful flower like lotus you want to have it it doesn't grow in the clear water. You need the muddy, nasty muddy, isn't it? You see, now the, the sprout of your enlightenment is right there in the messy place. Could be in the family, could be within the couple, uh, you know, could be in the society, could be anywhere, or maybe even could be with your own emotion. You know, up to now that haunting emotion, maybe that could be the one. That, that muddy place where you can sprout the lotus, the beautiful qualities, you see. So a lot of amazing, beautiful, beneficial uh, ideas, uh, wisdom or attitudes or perceptions will occur because of that, uh, you see. So, the, so, so therefore in Lamrim, one thing is that is not only in Lamrim, like any any day-to-day uh, -day, uh, you know, even even for Dharma practice, Dharma practice, even we do retreat or sessions, that itself is 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 a virtuous, positive practice. But as as a preparatory, preliminary practice, there's a section that we must meditate on preciousness of the human life, because that really give, you know, sense of confident, you know, sense of confident that you what are you going to do, you see, and that confident it comes with so much. Uh, positivity, respect, you know, uh, lightness, you see, is delight, uh, enthusiasticness, you know, uh, my, my poor English has not many words, but you, you, you can add on, the, all the good words you can add here, <laughs> you know, all this will come, you see, it's, 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 it's so wonderful like that, you see. Mm. So now, when you when you when you move on to the the next subject like death and impermanent here again you know you 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 construct uh, your perception about your life you know this preciousness yes this is precious but it lies in the nature of impermanent you cannot be too excited you cannot wait to <laughs> grab all the goodness tomorrow you better grab it right now because the nature may, may take away this preciousness right next moment. You see, so this very present moment is the right moment to practice. So there comes the second decision, second correct perception about our life uh, is the decision of, I must practice the Dharma now. You know, I must be happy now. Don't accumulate the resources to be happy later. That later may not come in our way. If you enjoy coffee, enjoy now, not later. Mm. Uh -huh. You see, so if you want to be, you know, be in the peace, wherever you are, in whatever situation, you know, don't expect uh, you know, your inner peace will create by others. You, it will create by uh, outer conditions, outer circumstances, you know. Even they may be possible, but it requires great effort, great resources to accumulate those circumstances, those conditions. But one, one amazing thing is the potential is already within. It just need to uh, reconstruct our perception, our our thinking, our mind. You know, you don't need much time. You don't need much effort. You know, you don't need to spend any material values. Just need to just need to think the way how the teaching, you know, suggests us to think. You know, we we don't even have to squeeze our brain so much. We just open the book, just try to you know, uh, seriously, genuinely, you know, try to uh, cultivate that, 
that itself would be so helpful, you see. Mm. So, so therefore, so true, you know. If you, you see, when 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 we talk about being happy, it sounds like a very tough job. It's a very difficult job. Mm. And sometimes, you know, if you ask, you will tell somebody, you know, be happy. They may, they may, uh, how to say? Uh, they may, they may not spit you back, but they sometimes with the word saying that it's easy to say, but it's not 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 easy. It's easy for you to say to be happy, but it's not easy to be happy. <laughs> you know, but you see, there's a very simple perception again. When, when, whenever we talk about being in inner peace, being in altruism, uh, uh, being happy, or being contented, being fulfilled, or being in the present moment, it's very much, in fact, you know, asking just to take care of one single present moment. Just one present, one that that one present moment. Not asking too much, you say, you know, take care of two present moments. Not asking you have to take care to be happy. Present, present moment, and the second after that present moment, you know, for five minutes, for 10 minutes, not even asking for one minute, just asking that very present moment, you know, please be happy that present moment, that one present moment, you see. So if you are asking yourself, you know, that you want to be happy, you're not asking too much. You're not asking you to be happy whole day. That is too much, isn't it? Uh, or, or not asking kind of like, you have to like kind of squeeze the Buddha into a, some kind of soluble and put in your mouth and and say, I'm okay, now here, I'm happy. <laughs> it's also, no, 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 there's no such kind of effort. <laughs> it's just simply, simply asking to have that perception, have that mindset for that one single present moment. If you're able to secure one single present, present that present moment, and if there is fortunately next present moment arrive, you just take care of that one present. You don't even need to think about the previous one. And if there's 100 present moments to enjoy, just take care, you know, just what, what do you call? Uh, uh, I don't know how to say in English, like one, one at the step. What do you call? One step at the time. So, so that's not that difficult, isn't it? <laughs> One step at a time, you know, you see. Uh, now, if you relate this to the natural law of ka uh, karmic cause and effect, if there's a next, next moment, because of the previous moment act as a direct cause, if the previous moment you're able to sustain, you're able to accumulate peace, the next present moment arrive, is a result, you know, the result will be result similar to the cause. You know, the one of the fact about natural law of karma is wrong, wrong cause will not produce wrong result. You need to have a right cause. Not only right cause, you need to have a similar cause. So peace will only deliver peace. Like whole world misunderstood. Weapon will deliver peace. That's why war, no such thing. It, it, it never happened, but still, you know, like engaging in war in the name of want to create peace, isn't it? Yeah, even even our own ordinary society, uh, if something goes wrong, you know, we go to court, we go to fight, hoping that we will we will we will uh, gain the victory, peace. No, no such thing. You know, it's 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 a wrong cause to the wrong result. You see, so therefore, it is quite definite. You know, you can almost say, hundred over hundred percent. Okay, if this is too much, then say ninety-nine percent. If you're able to remain in the present moment, virtue, the next very present moment of that 
will be virtue. If you're able to live peace, inner peace, you know, total contentment, instead of con contented mind now, the next moment will be, will be similar like that. And why, why cannot sustain that? Because of our awareness disappear. Our you know, awareness of uh, holding on to that, that perception disappear. That's why one of the, the teaching, the one of the uh, you know, most important preliminary teaching in Buddhist, Buddhist uh, Buddha Dharma is concentration. You know, mindfulness, you see. Even the wisdom to be, to be able to fully utilize, you need shamatha, like concentration. Without that, uh, you won't be able to achieve like special insight. Uh, you know, those, the greatest benefit of the realizing emptiness won't be, won't be there without the single point of concentration. In our day-to-day -day life, how many great wisdom you may have, but you don't have a sense of control over your mind, control over your thought, your thinking, you know, certain degree of like kind of your mind is listening. You don't have that authority. Very hard. So that's why day to day, you know, it's very important to train in you know in concentration meditation. You know, even 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 just be one one minute a day, and you accumulate that, uh, you will be amazed. You know, your mind start to listen to you. And then there, when you when you construct this positive perception, you able to the concentration can able to hold the same pattern to every future moment comes in your way. So you can have like half an hour, one hour, three hours, half a day, one whole day, one whole week in complete peace. You know. So, so you need the element of, of, of concentration. And the best way is to train through, you know, this breathing that we have, you know, just simply, you know, train uh, single-pointedly focusing on breathing in and out. You know, this is like the meditation, you know, we, we do, yeah? In Lamrim, is suggested, you know, I think 21 or 22 minutes, the initial training should take about 22 minutes. So that's, uh, why choose 22 minutes? Why not half an hour? Why not 10 minutes? Even, even in the conventional, uh, the training of the mind, if you persistently, you know, like focus or train in one particular subject for 22 minutes, result occurs. You know, so you repeat that 22 minutes of making sure that you have a complete clarity of knowing of the either the rhythm of the breathing or either a notion of the breathing or the sound of the breathing, whatever, uh, you know, uh, and, and single-pointed without intruding any other uh, awareness of any other objects or any other thoughts for 22 minutes, you know, every day. It's, 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 it's not that long, you know. Especially the moment you wake up in the morning, first thing you, you generate Buddhist motivation. Then after that, you do this uh, just breathing, which is also very good for health, isn't it? You see, deep breathing in and out for about 22 minutes. Then after that, then you move on with your day. It will be, will, be, will, be, will be wonderful like that. So anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yes. Break. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, we take break. How long? Twenty minutes break. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I, I still cannot get away from the perception topic. <laughs> okay. So it seems like today, uh, 
Yeah, you have to bear with me with the perception. Uh -huh. mm, so, yeah, <clears throat> uh, relating to the Lam Rim. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was talking about this uh, in order to uh, really uh, wholeheartedly, dedicatedly, from depth of one's heart, uh, to have a sustain, sustainable <clears throat> practice, genuine, you know, uh, sense of uh, uh, true Dharma practice, then, you know, there's three decisions uh, need to have that uh, Lama Tsongkhapa have uh, uh, illustrated that in his Lam Rim teaching. <clears throat> uh, uh, the first one is, you know, the de decision uh, in reflecting the freedom and uh, preciousness of the human rebirth, and, uh, you you have uh, you you make the decision that I can practice the Dharma, I can actualize enlightenment, etc. As I mentioned before, then the second one is the uh, decision to practice uh, right now, uh, <clears throat> having clear understanding. Uh, the uh, you know correct perception about um, uh, the uh, uh, <clears throat> the the na nature the the nature of the life <clears throat> uh, including you know the rest of the freedom and conditions we talk about, uh, everything lies in the nature of impermanent. Uh, and the impermanent is not just uh, momentarily, you know, shifting, uh, uh, you know, the, the position of the environment, <clears throat> of those freedoms, of those uh, <clears throat> uh, favorable conditions. But uh, one of the main thing is the impermanent uh, happen, seizing the life and occurring the death uh, from this sixth element of a human, in you know, a precious human life. On top of the four elements, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, earth, water, fire, air, then the another two element is the father, mother, substance. You know, that six elements uh, is the main uh, uh, factor to, to have the capability of the, the, the clear light, uh, occurrence of natural clear light, so that you can able to take clear light onto the path, uh, one of the uh, naturally provided, you know, best opportunity to get enlightened in Dharmakaya, if not at least realize emptiness. <clears throat> so, so because of that, then uh, it's very much like you must take uh, the full advantage of this precious human rebirth, because such uh, rebirth that delivered by the sixth element may not happen again. You know, uh, then again in the Lamrim, uh, there's so much illustrations of the rariness by relating to the cause. You know, in order to be born into such human life, you need uh, you you need a perfect moral practice in in this lifetime, which is which is not easy. And then a great practice of generosity, uh, consistent, you know, aspirations to have such rebirth, which we hardly have. Uh, once occasionally only, most of the time, you know, we don't have. You see? So therefore, from the point of view of the cause, reflecting on the causes. To actualize such precious human rebirth is very rare. So even in the example, you know, in Lamrim, they give the example of, you know, uh, the the tortoise in the like a pastry ocean, like the in the middle, with a heavy wa wave. Uh, once in the year on time, you know, just stick out the hat, and there's a small ring, you know, just just enough to the tortoise hat to go in. It's so rare, you know. So it's even from the example. So there are many, many teachings that you can, you can, 
uh, learn and construct a, a clear perception uh, about uh, the impermanent aspect of, you know, death and impermanent aspect of this life. And, you know, and that will initiate us to make sure uh, uh, we, we practice the Dharma now. And not only practicing now, but will help us to practice complete Dharma now. Uh, and, and not only just anyhow practice, but we practice well, uh, something that would making sure deliver result, uh, you know. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, so that is the, uh, that is necessary. So therefore the like past Kadamba masters, uh, uh, the having the perception, uh, clear perception, or uh, the, the knowledge of death and impermanent is so crucial that if you forget to remember the nature of impermanent and death in relation to our life, one morning, then entire morning didn't practice well. Entire morning is wasted. You see, entire morning is kind of diluted with the holy dharma, even though you may be practicing uh, verbally, physically, and even mentally try to do some meditations, etc. Uh, but in actual fact, didn't become concentrated one. So that's why before you go into any practice, you know, one thing uh, to, to, to initiate uh, uh, the, you know, the, the knowledge of that in impermanent. So <clears throat> like that. So then, <clears throat> uh, so then another perception is so important, not only practice, not only have the capable to practice Dharma, not only should practice right now, but should practice only Dharma. So that is, that sounds like hard in one way, but in another way, that's, that's you know, easy. If you have a correct perception, it's very easy. Uh, uh, it's the only practice Dharma. The reason is, uh, during the difficult time, let's say when we go through the transition of life and rebirth, death comes, or during the troubled time, even, even while we are alive, like health, physical, mental, or environmental tragedies, whatever, when you have an intact Dharma wisdom, uh, uh, even, even just simple wisdom of, you know, impermanent, impermanent, you see, it will protect from uh, disturbances of those unprevable situation comes in your way. Oh, this is impermanent, like about to do with your health. If something goes wrong, this means to happen. You know, uh, not, ha not uh, having any such changes or decay, that's, that's shocking. N you know, in this contaminated body, if not getting old, <laughs> if, if not, not wear and tear, whatever, you know, I also have some tear here. Uh, you know, you, you relate from the perspective of the Dharma, then see, that, is the, that, is the, that is the real life. It's completely numb, nothing changing. It's completely perfect health. It's not a life. <laughs> uh, so, you see, so, 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 you see, so, uh, so including the death, you know, you know there's, we have that kind of like a, is very much, very much from uh, changing from the first moment to second moment, you know. The reality is we die every single, uh, you know, uh, time of two moments. Every single time of two, you know, within the two moments, you see. The previous moment, you know, just this, just, just very moment of this previous tension zopa is dead in relation to this present tension zopa. Dead. You see? So we don't fear of pronouncing tension zopa is dead, isn't it? <laughs> we only get scared. You know, this, uh, the, when the corpse are like, like kind of, you know, is not breathing, then, you, then, then they, everybody's scared. But, but this is just because of the perception. You know, they didn't have a clear perception 
of knowing what exactly the death is. You see, uh, <clears throat> you see, when we talk about the death, like clinical death, the perception of clinical death is the moment you don't you don't breathe, you stop breathing. You know, we have so many moments of not breathing. You know, or whatever we breathe just moment before cannot breathe in present time. You see, then about the physical cell, you know, the dying of the physical cell, you know, the development of this body is because of so many evolving of the cells in our body, isn't it? So many old cells died, new cells were produced. That's how it goes, isn't it? You see, so when it comes to spiritual death, when it comes to spiritual death, there's, you know, every moment, you know, there's a subtle clear light occurrence until the clear, you know, the clear light experiences, you know, subconsciously occurs. That's why, you know, through meditation, we try to awaken that, you know. Uh, so spiritually also, in fact, momentarily, you know, the previous moment is dead to the present moment, uh, you see. And, and that comes to uh, uh, the very last day of, you know, uh, our, our continuum in this human body. That's, that, that's kind of like uh, illustrated as a uh, bihuha. Or I don't know whether I say right or not, but make it make a big issue. <laughs> uh, but actually similar, similar thing has already happened many times before. So anyway, uh, yeah, but then the, 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 the most important, uh, the reason why we need to uh, have the perception of the Dharma wisdom and attitude uh, is, you know, is not just to claim that I'm practicing Dharma. You know, there's a, there's a great purpose, there's a great result out of that. There's a temporary result and ultimate result. The temporary result is that present time, it will protect us from fear, protect us from confusion, you know, protect us from whatever thing that you do not wish to experience, you know, emotionally, you know, uh, you're able to help yourself, you see. As I mentioned to you, you know, I have a tear here, you know, if, you know, uh, if you're able to relate uh, with the impermanent wisdom or do Tonglen practice, this is, is like blessing. So emotionally, it doesn't bother me, isn't it? But if if just relate because of tear, painful, oh, that's, that's horrible. That's really depressing, uh, you see? So now more pain there, your, your practice of Tonglen become even more intense. You know, it really tease to your, your wisdom of impermanent, tease to the understanding of the limitation of these contaminated aggregates. And you, you, you start to gain a genuine sense of renunciation, detachment to this body, which is so crucial. You know, one of the tragedy of a spiritual, pract spiritual practitioner is the attachment to your own body you know, will ruin at the very end of your, our, 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 our life, you ruin all your, uh, you know, all your practice because of the, the, the completing karma is complete with the attachment to your body. You know, can't, not, not able to renounce, you see. So <clears throat> uh, then at the time of the actual, uh, you know, the universal kind of uh, conventional death comes, uh, if you have a well habituated Dharma imprint, it can be just about guru devotion. It can be just about emptiness wisdom. It can be just about renunciation, bodhicitta, love, compassion, whatever it can be. It can be, or just simply remembering the image of one Buddha or remembering of your guru. If you're able to have a full conviction of reliance as that practice as an object of your protection, refuge, you're able to pass away, your clear light will be fully utilized onto the path by the help of ripening all the accumulations of merits 
all the accumulations of imprint and dharma you accumulated from beginningless lifetime. Everything become lively. You know, I usually give an example, maybe some of you must have heard many times, but you need one switch. You know, right now, we have too many, too many switch to one light, uh, or too many switch to one room, or one tunnel, that too many, too many switch. Uh, you know, but, but, but each of the switch, you know, is not linked to all the light bulbs. It's just singular, you know, one switch to one small light, very dim light. You want bright light to the tunnel, isn't it? How wonderful that one switch will lead entire rest of the light bulb. So easy, just one click. But you need to light in order to have the full brightness, light 100 light bulbs. At this stage, you know, we have so many different level of practices, which is wonderful, but there's no one switch, one practice that which is so solid. Once you own it, it's like lit entire, like trigger entire lights. You see? <clears throat> so I don't know whether I said uh, the English, my English, I also don't understand what I'm saying. Uh, so, so anyway, I think you understood what I mean. <laughs> Uh, so, so you see, uh, you see now, you know the the dead process, uh, the clear light process. In order to reach to that natural clear light, the the you know the natural clear light, we need to go through the uh, uh, the dissolution of the four four elements, eighty conceptual um, yeah, hallucinations. Then white, red, you know, black near yeah, appearance. In order for us to reach to the, the most quality meditative subtle level of the mind, you need to clear entire conceptual mentality, conceptual mindsets, conceptual uh, perceptions. Otherwise, we we are unable to, you know, reach to the the clearest state of our mind. Where, where store all the potential of all the virtues. And one amazing thing, you know, which I find so comforting is that uh, once you reach to the white appearance, you know, it was say the negative influence, negative influence uh to to our to our subtle mind uh, re, uh, remain until to the last moment of the conceptual con you know anti conceptual uh the mind uh, the, the the mental state mm -hmm. okay so <clears throat> after anti conceptual mindset is purified by, by natural process of the dying, only virtuous imprints able to influence you. But the virtuous imprint uh, influenced, the, influenced by uh, the condition of the trigger uh, factor. You see? And for that, you need one virtuous mind if you have awareness of one virtuous mind, after the eighty conceptual thought is dissolved, then entire your subtle mental state is filled with the entire virtuous imprint that you accumulate, especially spiritual dharma imprint you accumulated, even from countless eons before, will be fully, fully like a lively, like 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 now, like that, you know, like everything. Uh, 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 everything you know, so so vivid like that. You see, so, but in order to, in order, to, uh, otherwise, otherwise, during those, the state of w white appearance, red appearance, black near appearance, is more like just just a appearance of some color only. White appearance, like everything become like a whitish color. 
red appearance, everything is like a reddish. And black, like completely blank. You know, then when the clear light comes, it's like complete empty. That's it. There's no meaning. You see, unable to take onto the path. But in order to that natural, most uh, favorable state of uh, the one circle of life, uh, yeah, one circle of life and rebirth, for the spiritual practitioner, you need one switch, uh, one virtuous imprint that you're able to hold, you're able to remember uh, uh, from the very first time that you know the, the earth element is dissolving. Even when the clinical death is pronounced, you know, the last breath, you know, even there that your awareness able to hold on to that particular one virtue. And from there, naturally, through the eighty conceptual experiences, uh, one of the awareness in conceptual mind, that virtuous imprint is carry on, and that when reached to the white appearance, is like the switch lit of entire light of the virtues that you accumulate from beginningless lifetime, and all those meritorious uh, virtuous accumulations. Uh, become the conducive environment, the clear light to be able to take onto our path. And there, uh, practitioners, you know, actualize, you know, uh, dharmakaya, you know, enlightenment, if not, at least empty, uh, realize emptiness directly, you know. Uh, uh, if not, then at least secure a very powerful virtue that next rebirth is definitely, uh, you know, going to have a favorable uh, body to, favorable life to continue to carry on your 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 remaining practice, you see. So, so, so in order to in order to do that, right now, from now on, we have to practice only dharma. So that's my point. On, only dharma. Now, is how possible, you know? So, uh, how to practice only dharma? How possible? You know, I have so many, uh, uh, you know, holy responsibilities like job, family, etc. No, it's all about, again, perception. It's mindset, you see? So everything, everything you do, uh, you, you motivate and you dedicate for the benefit of numberless sentient beings, enlightenment, you know, altruistic you know, motivation, you see? So that way, entire your job life, family life, everything becomes altruistic dharma. So not only the dharma that you practice, but also the ordinary responsibilities also become a dharma. So that's what it means, like only practice dharma. It means everything, you know, transform in, onto the path like that. You know, even in the dharma language, they everything take onto the path to enlightenment, isn't it? So that's the, what it means. Oh, so that's, those are the three decisions like that. So now, okay, so I have a few minutes. Oh, then uh, after that, uh, in Lamrim, uh, you know, uh, let's say, uh, like those major topics, like such as teaching on Four Noble Truth, you know, the teaching on the troubling of interdependent rising, you know, teaching on the wisdom of selflessness, uh, you know, very much the common uh, part to the small and middle, and also like Four Noble Truth, you know, teaching are the common to the all the three yanas. So, so when, you see, we need to have a perception about the teaching on Four Noble Truth, like what Buddha said, suffering is to be known. So we need to have a perception of suffering need to understand, you know. So we cannot avoid the, the buzzing in the, the introduction of what suffering is, you know. Uh, remember in the, in the past, Nowadays, I don't know, like in, in the Kopan, you know, we have course, meditation course. Uh, and for, there will be a bunch of uh, uh, participants that they don't want to hear anything to do with topic on suffering, topic on limitations of samsara, you know, and because they feel depressing. Uh, but but in order to really get freedom out of uh, 
the attachment to the samsara, you need to know the limitation of samsara, isn't it? You know, the the samsara about our life, you know, the main main samsara is the third level of the suffering, the contaminated aggregates. The the aggregates, the mental aggregate, physical aggregates, the environment, uh, which in which is which infused by the karma and delusion makes samsara, not just the not just the suffering of change and suffering of uh, pain, isn't it? So, <clears throat> so therefore, you know, so we need to have this perception of, oh, is the suffering is something that we should learn what it is, you see? Then it says, causes of suffering is to be purified, to overcome. Uh, then cessation is to be achieved, you know, path to be cultivated, you see? So, it's very much about the mindset, you know, it's about perception. Uh, it's, again, it's about perception, yeah, you see. Mm. Then about the troubling, you see, we, we need to have this uh, clear perception about how the, the negative circle of the troubling happens from ignorant and deliver all the way up to the death the cycle, you know, the trouble cycle, you see. Uh, then we also need to have a clear perception about the reverse, the circle of the traveling. Like if you stop ignoring, then you will stop rest of the karma, rest of the, you know, the seven kind of the sufferings, uh, including of the death. You know, you have to stop birth, you have to stop, you know, uh, death, etc. You see, so, so it's, so it's it's like that. Now, when it comes to the Mayanic Dharma about the altruism. We need to have a perception of all sentient beings as our mother. Perception, isn't it? All sentient beings as our mother. You know, or all sentient beings has been our mother. You know, so without that, without the percept, without perceiving uh, sentient beings, any sentient beings that ha has been your mother, no way we are able to develop genuine sense of love, genuine sense of compassion, no bodhicitta. So you see, so so it's it's a critical, isn't it? Like to to able to to able to have to able to have this develop this perception of you have been my mother, you also have been my mother, you have been my guru, you know, you have been my brother, you know. You see, even yes, you are behaving as a enemy to me now. But, but the fact is, it's just maybe one or two time, or maybe only this time. But you had many time. You you have been my mother, precious mother. You see. Then from there, then you're able to uh, have the perception of you know, uh, uh, you know, remembering their kindness, repaying their kindness, or uh, then uh, generating repaying the kindness through you know generating love, unconditional love. Compassion, then bodhicitta, you know. So again, the, the 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 perception, you know, we need to develop such perception. You see. So then, <clears throat> uh, when we talk about compassion, you know, we need to develop perception of sentient beings are really in suffering. Even to those who are partying, they are also in suffering. <laughs> you see. So you have to go beyond. Uh, the the uh, the understanding of the you know the um, the suffering the limited to our perception you know like just notion of uh, just acknowledging the suffering of pain is only suffering suffering of change is only suffering but actually we need to get to uh, realize the 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 actual root of the suffering is actually pervasive compounded suffering. The, 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 the contaminated the poison of karma and delusion that is that is the thing you see so 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 that so once you develop that perception then now you have an equanimity you know the the great true great compassion to everybody doesn't matter whether someone is physically pain or someone is laughing enjoying you have an equal sense of compassion to everybody because when it comes to the third level of suffering, it's equal to everybody. If we don't have that perception, then our compassion will never be 
all pervasive compassion. It will be biased compassion. You know, only do the painful one, then yes, I want to liberate them. But those who are partying say, uh, okay, <laughs> you're already enjoying, why you need my help, you know? You see? So, so you, we need to develop the perception of, you know, uh, the aggregates are in fact is contaminated uh, for the purpose of generating uh, you know, great compassion, great compassion. But before doing that, we need to have a perception of acknowledging our own third level of suffering, you see, and reasoning our own limitation then relate to the rest of the others in a similar position. That's how that you, you know, you, you develop great compassion as again taught in the long rim like that, isn't it? So, okay, I put there. Now I say a little bit about Tantra. Again, the tan in Tantra, it's all to do about perception. You see, Tantra is, as I mentioned at the beginning, is to purify impure perception. That's the whole definition of what means Tantra. Mantra is all about purifying impure perception and uh, constructing a new perception, which is called the divine perception, pure perception, you see. Uh, and that's so powerful, right? This very moment when you practice Tantra, if you claim you're practicing Tantra, then I have to view all of you as a Dhaka Dakinis, not ordinary people. So if I, if I have a perception of viewing all of you as a Daga Dagini, how can I abuse you? How can I see limitation in you? How can I have any sense of non-beneficial idea about you? Isn't it? It's so wonderful, isn't it? So that as far as concerned, the environment, you, you know, we need to purify the ordinary perception. Everything is a celestial of the Buddha, celestial of the deity, you see? Your yourself, your body is the, uh, the the body. You know, you purify the ordinary perception about ordinary person, and you become uh, divine. You know, a holy body, divine holy mind, divine holy speech, divine environment, and divine everybody, and all about perception. I stop here. I already took two minutes extra from you, and uh, yeah, so we. Uh, yeah, do a very short dedication. So, um, uh, yeah, so whatever merit that we accumulate <clears throat> from this session, all the merit accumulated in the past, or when we accumulate in the future, all the merit of the past, present, future Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Gurus, sentient beings, may it be completely caused for numberless sentient beings to be free from oceans of samsaric suffering and actualized from temporary happiness up to the ultimate happiness, enlightenment accordingly. May this collective merit be completely caused. So whatever inconvenience that experiencing in the in the world, such as uh, natural disaster, diseases, war, you know, famine, um, be purified and actualize peace and happiness in the world. May this collective merit be completely caused. Uh, all the beneficial beings like His Holiness Dalai Lama and all the gurus uh, and and yourself, your family members, always enjoy good health, long life, and fulfill all your aspirations accordingly. May this quality may be complete cause. Anyone who passed away, uh, including you know the Rob's father, and anyone who passed away, especially passed away in a war zone, passed away in untimely death, uh, passed away with a very painful uh, death process, passed away in the accident, uh, be free from suffering of death, suffering of intermediate state, suffering of rebirth, actualize high rebirth in Buddha's pure realm. And within that pure realm, they actualize uh, full enlightenment uh, within that very lifetime accordingly. May this collective merit be complete cause. Whoever requested prayers from me, who re whoever requested prayers from you, may this collective merit be, you know, ripen up on them and they actualize all their aspirations accordingly. May this collective merit be complete cause. Uh, all the virtuous institutions like monasteries, nunneries, all the Dharma Center, then especially the uh, a higher Giver Center, uh, then Mother Tara Meditation Center, uh, free from inner outer city obstacle, actualize all the um, conducive conditions to preserve the Dharma virtue in extensive learning and also realization on the stages of the path accordingly. May this quality merit be complete cause. All the uh, altruistic wishes of a precious Guru, Japjan Lama Subram, which is fulfilled, and may we have the uh, um, uh, great resources of merit to actualize this unmistakable reincarnation to carry, which is uh, enlightened legacy accordingly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I will stop here. <laughs>